Whether it's high art or beautiful trash, the AV Club explores the best of film, TV, music, books, and games. Inventory is our obsessively specific pop culture list. Welcome to Inventory. Uh, today we're talking about creepy babies. Those are those unsettling bundles of joy in TV and film that may make you reconsider procreating. My pick for this was 1996's Train Spotting. Choose life, choose a job, choose a career. Choose Train Spotting boasts a number of memorable scenes. None more so than when Ewan McGregor is locked up in his childhood bedroom by his parents and forced to kick heroin cold turkey. Maybe I should go back to the clinic. No. No clinics. I need one more fucking edge! And this is where we get the creepy baby for this inventory. Oh. Oh. Ah! I the man! Earlier in the film, McGregor is woken by one of his heroin junkie friends screaming because she finds her baby Dawn dead in her crib. No! Baby Dawn returns in the form of McGregor's guilt. He has guilt over his friend Spud going to jail while McGregor avoids it guilt over turning his formerly straight-laced friend Tommy onto heroin. Come on, man, I'm a fucking adult. I can find out for myself. Well, I'm finding out, all right. But most of all, he feels guilty about contributing to the neglect that led to the death of baby Dawn. Okay. Was... Train Spotting had a tiny $2.4 million budget, and all the effects were done in camera. There was literally a guy on the other side of the ceiling pulling the baby along the track and trying to make it look smooth. But even if the baby's face and movement looked fake, it's still creepy. Ah! Oh, no! And if you really like that scene from Train Spotting, you can become friends on Facebook with the baby from Train Spotting. Right now, she only has 111 friends. So. Oh, so it needs her help. Yeah, it does. Stop! Ah! After that, I feel like we should lighten the mood a little bit with Genevieve's creepy baby. Yes, well, uh, Baby Gerald from The Simpsons, also known as the baby with one eyebrow, is a pretty minor character in Springfield, but he's still pretty creepy, especially if you're Maggie Simpson. The first time he appears, he's explicitly referred to as Maggie's arch nemesis. Everybody needs a nemesis. Even Maggie has that baby with the one eyebrow. It's never said why they hate each other. Presumably, she hates poorly groomed eyebrows and he hates pacifiers. In a later episode in season 15, during a baby riot, Maggie is seen pummeling baby Gerald. Springfield citizens are outraged about the destruction caused by the bad babies. Bad babies! When the series made the switch to HD in 2009 and changed the opening sequence to reflect that, they added Maggie and Gerald. Supposedly Gerald's known around town for creating, you know, mischief and mayhem. Baby Gerald, we can't help but wonder what mischief you'll get into next. But if you think about it, Maggie's really created a lot more mayhem over the years. That cutaway of them looking at each other through the window and can like squeeze his juice box. That always cracks me up. Maggie doesn't seem to get along with the other babies. So let's get back on drugs with your pick, Sean. Yes, let's get back on drugs. In Jay McInerney's uh, novel about the cocaine overdose of the American dream at Bright Lights Big City, uh, he lines up a fat rail of pure uncut metaphor called the coma baby. Um, which is a fetus trapped inside a woman who's left comatose by a car accident, and they both become a subject of tabloid fascination. In the film adaptation of 1988 with Michael J. Fox, Coma Baby sort of lurks around the edges as Michael J. Fox's hard-living fact-checker digs himself deeper into drugs and personal ruin. How's it going? It's also a sign of his unquenchable thirst for things that he knows are bad for him. You're a secret fan of killer bees, hero cops, sex fiends, living nightmares, life on other planets, spontaneous human combustion, coma babies. In case that symbolism isn't loud enough for you, they turn it up a little bit when Michael J. Fox actually meets the coma baby in a dream sequence. You gonna come out? In case it wasn't clear that Fox is essentially talking to himself, the coma baby actually has Michael J. Fox's voice. I like it in here. Everything I need is pumped in. Anyway, with that metaphorical link established, anytime Michael J. Fox is wondering how his character is doing, he can just check the papers. So by movie's end, he's decided to stop killing himself with coke, uh, and thus he's emerged from his own womb, and he's born anew. And so it's time to check the headlines one last time. 
did you get that Michael J. Fox is the coma baby? Can a creepy baby just be a creepy baby for the sake of being a creepy baby? No, we need metaphors. Otherwise, you would never understand. Oh, yeah. yeah. That cocaine is bad. I can't hear you. Which of these three babies would, would you babysit? I would definitely babysit Dawn because she's dead. It's super easy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, hey, Don, for more creepy babies, visit avclub.com.